Hey everyone, Matt Jobin with Reach Your Summit. In this video, I want to go over with you this technical piece that I have on. This is the Ghost Whisperer Hooded Down Jacket by Mountain Hardware. I've been using this jacket for about four years now in various conditions, and I've been extremely happy with it. We're going to go over the technical specifications of the jacket. I'm going to compare it to another product and I'm also going to go over the advantages and disadvantages with you. Now this jacket uses a 7 denier by 10 denier uh, ripstop nylon fabric. This is only made in one mil in the entire world. So it's very exclusive. Fabric is going to be very thin uh, but it is also very breathable and allowing me to have more mobility when I'm wearing this jacket. Typically from a backpacking perspective, I won't really wear this while I'm staying active. Now, this jacket was designed for that specific type of pursuit, but I find that with my other layers I can stay pretty warm when I'm moving throughout the day. And so I'll usually just use this when I'm taking breaks or I'll use this as part of my sleep system at night. Now, if I'm out for a couple of hours and I'm just doing a day hike, this could be a great piece. Some other activities that I'll use this jacket with would be cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. So the down that they're using in this jacket is an 800 fill power, responsibly sourced goose down. And Mountain Hardware is also using their proprietary Q-Shield. What Q-Shield is, is a hydrophobic down. It's very similar to your down tech that you find in a lot of Big Agnes products and dry down that you find in Sierra Designs products. And what I mean by hydrophobic down is this. Uh, so this plume here is plucked from the jacket and hydrophobic down is basically a treatment that is applied to every single plume that is inside of the jacket. And so what that does is it resists moisture, it helps it dry a little bit quicker, and it helps it retain its loft a little better than an untreated down jacket. Uh, this works very well, especially here where I am in New England when we get humid conditions in the wintertime at times. And so each individual plume that is inside of the jacket is treated. Along with that, the fabric on the outside of this jacket is going to have a DWR finish. Now, this gives it some water resistance. Obviously, you don't want to be standing out in the pouring rain for hours with this jacket on. Eventually it's going to soak through and eventually you're going to start feeling cold. If you hear that down will keep you warm when you're wet or synthetics will keep you warm when you're wet, that just defies the laws of science. Nothing is going to keep you warm when you're wet. Eventually you're going to start feeling cold. So here's a look at the down inside of the jacket. So one design feature that I really appreciate with this jacket is the sewn-in quilt-like pattern that they chose. This helps keep all of the down inside of the jacket. It also helps retain more warmth. It also helps with the compressibility and the lighter weight. So the size that I wear is a medium. Uh, I went with the hooded version. There is a non-hooded version also. The weight of this jacket is a ridiculously lightweight 7.7 .7 ounces. I'm 5 foot 11 and I weigh about 155 pounds and so with shirts I typically wear a medium and with this jacket being a medium also I find it to be very comfortable, very form-fitting uh, and this jacket is $350. Now this jacket keeps me very, very warm. How warm it may keep you is all relative. Everyone's body mechanics are different. 
and we all have our own personal comfort levels. For me, I've been able to wear this jacket with a short sleeve base layer shirt, whether it's polyester or 150 merino wool. I've been able to wear a shirt with just this jacket over it down to 24 degrees Fahrenheit. That's after I've been active and I'm just standing around for a couple of hours, whether I'm at camp, setting up camp, or if I'm just finished with an activity. Single digits, I can layer on another lightweight technical fleece like the R1 that I have here. And I can be pretty comfortable down in colder temperatures. So the cuffs on this jacket are excellent. Inside, there's no Velcro. It's almost like an elastic band that's inside of here that keeps it snug and secure. There's no way to really uh, tighten it or make it larger aside from your wrist uh, pushing on the fabric and stretching it out. So that could be a disadvantage to this jacket, but I find it fits my wrist pretty comfortably. Uh, I'm also able to wear a watch and look at my watch without having any issues with accessing it with the jacket. The jacket slides right back over. Uh, there is a very small draw cord closure in here, so I can pull this tight if I wanted to. It can hang down unless you tuck it under the jacket. So it does help keep more warmth in, uh, but that cordage can get in the way. But I personally don't find any issues with that. Some might find that to be a disadvantage. But with my frame, I really don't need to tighten this too often, and I find it to be pretty comfortable. Uh, the toggle is hidden away inside of this fabric here. Um, so you squeeze down on it and you can release the fabric. When it's not being used, it hides away nicely. Uh, the jacket only has two pockets. They're pretty good in size. Uh, if I take this Nalgene bottle here, put the Nalgene in the pocket. Got the whole bottle inside of that pocket and I'm able to zip it up. And there's another pocket right here on the other side. The zippers are very small. I don't find them to snag the fabric too often, but it can happen at times just because it's a little bit smaller than some of your other standard zippers. But there are no complaints here when it does what it's supposed to do and it helps cut down on the weight with the smaller zipper. So if I'm wearing a winter hat, or I prefer to wear a brimmed hat in the winter time, or if you have a climbing helmet on, this hood pulls over without any issues. And then when I zip this up, it's nice and snug right around my head. Uh, there's no toggle or cinch cord on the back, so you can't adjust that and tighten it if you need to. That could be a drawback, uh, but for me personally, this keeps nice and snug around my personal facial structure. So that's something that I find to work really well also. I went with the hooded version because with a very minuscule amount of extra weight, I'm getting the added warmth when I need it, when I'm stationary, when I'm exposed to wind and the cold. And if I'm using this in my hammock or my tent at night when I'm 
camping in the winter time. This is going to keep my head a little bit warmer along with my mummy style bag and my hat that I might have with me also. So with gloves, don't have any issues with getting those on either. This goes nicely around. The wrist cuff on the jacket goes nicely around uh, whether you have a liner on or if you have a, a more robust, thicker, insulated snow glove. And I'm able to stay nice and warm and comfortable. So if I were to compare this jacket to a few others out there on the market currently, I would compare it to the Patagonia Micropuff which is going to be a synthetic insulation. The Arcteryx Cerium LT hoodie and also the Rab Microlite Alpine. Uh, the Microlite Alpine is going to be the heaviest out of those that I mentioned, but it's also going to be the most durable. This, as I mentioned, has a very paper-like thin material to it. And I do find myself being a little more cautious when I'm wearing this jacket in a specific location uh, with a lot of brush and lots of rugged terrain than I would with a, a different type of jacket. But I still haven't had any issues with this jacket in those specific locations or conditions. The only thing that I have had happen, which happens to any down or synthetic jacket with the nylon, is there was one winter night that I was standing near the campfire that we had at camp and an ember landed down on the jacket. Singed a very, very small hole in the jacket, but not enough to compromise the performance. And that is not a manufacturer defect or anything that is my complete fault with that. So what I did was I took some tenacious tape that I had in my gear repair kit in my pack and I patch that up and I've never had an issue with it. So this stuff is always in my repair kit and this is what I had on the jacket that I just showed you and you simply clean any of the frayed ends that you might have on the material and then I'll cut the piece that I need from this roll. I will apply it to the hole in the jacket or the product and then let it cure for a couple of hours. You can put some weight on it. What I did in this case was I put it on the jacket and then when I went to bed, uh, I laid down on it and my body heat helped cure that glue a little bit, kept me warm at night and the jacket was pretty solid the next day. And I've never had an issue with it since. As for other durability issues, I have not had anything at all. I've Brush this up against some light brush, uh, some branches, it's rubbed against some rocks very, very lightly though, not anything too aggressive, and I have not had an issue with this jacket ripping or tearing on me. The threads are all still very secure on this jacket after four years. The stitching is really well done. It's held up really well. And this has been a solid piece. Uh, so when I'm not using this jacket and I have it in my pack, I'll just store it in a lightweight stuff sack. That helps mitigate the moisture absorption that I might get with the jacket in specific conditions. The hydrophobic down and the DWR finish on the jacket helps with that also. So this helps with prevention. If it does get wet or damp, I will lay it out in the sunlight when it's dry during the day. And as always, I will also use a trash compactor bag as a pack liner, and that helps mitigate the moisture from absorbing into the down jacket also. Now the other way that you can store this jacket if you wanted to, is it does stuff into its own pocket. Uh, 
So you have this zipper here with a tag that says stow. So what else is nice is there's a loop here and you can clip it with a carabiner if you wanted to or tie it off to something. And so this is the jacket completely packed up. And for comparison, I have a Nalgene bottle here. And the Patagonia down sweater jacket. Uh, the Patagonia down sweater jacket is without a hood. And the fill that they're using in this jacket, I believe, is a 700 fill responsibly sourced goose down. But this jacket is very warm compared to a lot of other puffy jackets. And it's pretty close in size to a Nalgene bottle. Uh, and here it is side by side with the Patagonia down sweater. You know they are two completely different jackets, but just to give you a comparison since I have the two with me here. So you can see the down sweater is a little more boxier, a little more of a relaxed fit, and more of an athletic slim fit to the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. So with this jacket, I will also clean it and treat it when needed. And I've never had an issue with the hydrophobic down inside of it. I will use uh, Nick Wax Down Wash Direct. And what I'll do is I will hand wash this or I will wash it in a front loading washing machine on a very low cycle and then I will put it in the dryer on air fluff with a tennis ball and that will help fluff that loft back out inside of the jacket and also help the jacket dry a little more naturally than you would with a really excessive heat on it and by doing that, I'm able to prolong the life of the jacket, the warmth of the jacket, and remove any body oils or dirt or debris or anything that I might have on the fabric that could cause those pores to absorb some of that moisture that I might be out in. Uh, so there you have it. The Ghost Whisperer Hooded Down Jacket by Mountain Hardware. As I said, I've been using this jacket for about four years now, and I've been extremely happy with how it's performed. I've used this jacket in various locations, like the White Mountains in New Hampshire, the Green Mountains in Vermont, the Scottish Highlands in Scotland, uh, Glacier National Park in Montana, Acadia National Park up in Maine, and it's always kept me very warm, very comfortable, whether I'm hammocking or using a tent, backpacking, cross-country skiing up north, and snowshoeing up in the mountains. It's been a great technical piece, very comfortable, and very form-fitting for me personally. The only thing that I would probably add to it, which would add a little bit of weight, would be the toggle on the back of the hood, so I can cinch it down a little tighter if I wanted to, but it's not really a make or break for me. The jacket's been great, the hood has been excellent. It's just me nitpicking a little bit. If you have any questions on this jacket or any other products that you've seen in my videos, please feel free to get in touch. Send me a comment below or get in touch with me at reachyoursummit.net. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. See you in the next video.